Hey, good morning everyone. So I just thought I'd do a quick video on how I fill little pinprick holes in handles. Now I've tried a few techniques doing this over the years and this one's the one that I like the most uh, or a variant of it. So I'm going to be using a little bit of clay here uh, to basically a little bit like you see on those resin tables that people do to support the fill of the resin. People use silicon. I can't bother to wait for it to go off so I use clay. This is a few of the batch of paring knives that I've been working on. A couple that I'm working on there. This is one of my latte blocks with brass spaces. And this one is a spalted tamarind with, with uh, bog oak and brass spaces as well. As you can see here, let me see what we have. Because this is stabilised Banksia pod, uh, it's a nice hard timber-esque material. But you can see there's a few bits here like where there would have been a small pocket when I cast resin it didn't fill or it chipped out when I was turning it that one I think. And these are what you get sometimes in Banksia pod, a few little fishes. They tend to have resin in them, uh, stabilizing resin in them. So all I do is because I don't want that stabilizer and they don't look good. I get the tiniest little Dremel that I can get and I just fish them out or flick them out with a uh, like a scribe type tool like this sort of thing. So this is clay that I use uh, for sometimes making a bit more ornate silicon moulds and that sort of stuff. This is a new one because, well, I'm out of it. I'm only going to need a little bit of this. It comes off in like strips, as you can see. When it starts more and all I do is remember from school. When you're at school you just roll these in your fingers, get yourself a nice little sausage. Now you can 100% do this with super glue, CA glue, mix it with a little bit of blue uh, and it works as well. I just like to have the same resin that makes up the handle as filling up the holes. Uh, and some of these bigger holes are going to take a long time with, with super glue to keep filling up. So this is two parts of my resin, my own brand resin. It's a two to one by volume uh, and a, and a 100 to 46 by weight so it's pretty easy to work out so what I've done here is I've done uh, 10 grams of my part A and 4.6 grams or in fact I've done 5 grams of my part B so I want it to go off a little a little faster than I normally would now the beauty of this stuff is it actually cures nice and slowly which is part of the reason I got it uh, so that beginners who have just started casting resin can can use this and it, they can use it with my silicon molds uh, with a, or with their own molds whatever how they want to do it so I do a beginner's kit with a silicon mold some colors and a liter and a half of, of my resin um, and you can cue and you can do this because it has a long open time the bubbles you can see how many bubbles are in there they will rise to the surface all of their own accord and you'll have no absolutely no need for a pressure pot now i've messed with this a lot and never had any requirement for a pressure pot um you can use a pressure pot if you want to heat it so if you want to heat it it'll cure significantly faster um and then obviously if you are heating it to a temperature at which it does cure much faster you may trap some bubbles in it so then you want to think about having a pressure pot This is a product that I use in this specific blue handle. I love this stuff. It's a Divine Pigments colour, uh, Abyss Blue, and it's lovely and deep blue. Really, really gorgeous, like a nighttime sky blue, like a midnight blue almost. Uh, I have no affiliation with this company, but they they make incredible stuff. I have a lot of their colours, and uh, and if you are starting out and you want to use dyes as well as, as micas, 
these other to wait to go. They're, they're I think they've only been around about three years, but really good company, very polite to talk to, really helpful, and obviously know their stuff. You get a really even blue, like no sort of streaking like you can with mica powders and stuff. A beautiful consistency. Now, sometimes you wonder if you've got enough blue in or colour in. You can sort of tell with a lot of colours by putting them sort of up on the edge and then looking at what they look like on, on the edge of the actual plastic. You can see a lot of stuff looks dense in colour until you put it up on the edge and realise it's still transparent or translucent. Um, this is sort of the colour that I'm looking for, so I'm pretty happy with that. So all I'm going to do now is essentially just drip it into the... Um, into the holes and just work it in a little bit with a lollipop stick. Filling the little cavities that I've created with some of the resin. And actually there's another little trick, if you let it drip from high up and get you know, a nice flowing stream, it doesn't work so well with this, but if you're pouring resins, if you've ever got uh, bubbles in them and you want to try to get that out, if you pour them from a height and get yourself a nice flat flowing layer of resin, you will actually find a lot of the bubbles will pop on the way down because they have no thickness of essentially resin to hide inside of. So all I'm going to do is now work it into those spots because you can get, because they're such tiny little holes, you can actually get the problem with the fact that it, it sits on top and creates an air bubble and never actually falls into the hole and it goes off and you've got to do it all again so I tend to just work it in a little bit making sure that it's found its way into those holes I have in the past got a little syringe and just dabbed it in the hole and that's, that can help but um, I don't find it's required to be honest So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to throw this whole knife in the oven at about 40 degrees Celsius and it makes the liquid a little bit more viscous and it runs into those holes easier. Also, the secondary beauty it has is it helps it cure far faster because it's hot, so I don't have to wait as long. I'm not a big fan of wasting stuff, so this little bit of resin here seems like not a lot to throw away, but not really, like I say, a really big fan of letting stuff go to waste. So I have this little box of goodies that I sometimes just throw other bits into uh, that I'm not using. So these are sweet pods. They're very cool. Um, they're stabilized already. I stabilized these some time back and basically they're sitting there waiting to go. Uh, I So here's what I ended up with. I've throwing it in the oven for a little while so it heats up and the reason I do that is just because it's been stabilized for some time which means there could still be some moisture sitting on the surfaces of the timber and all I'm going to do throw it in give it some love turn it over a few times and basically try to make sure there's resin all the way through all the holes if you hold it there you'll see bubbles popping out of it and that sort of thing so when you're doing this sort of thing, you really still want to use a pressure pot, even with this resin. You can do it without. It's a bit of an annoyance, but you can make it happen. Uh, but whilst if you have a pressure pot, then 100% use one.
We'll just wet it so you can see what it looks like when it's shined up. And that's that. So if you liked this video, if there's anything you learned off it, I'd be really grateful for subscribe and whack that little bell button because what it does is let you know whenever I put a new video out so you get to see what the latest things are going on. If you want to support my channel, uh, I'm not into the whole Patreon and all that sort of stuff. I'm not asking for anything for free, but what I am doing is a little bit of merchandise. So I've got hoodies uh, and I've got t-shirts all at www.tobefireandsteel.com. Uh, also leather patches and that sort of stuff. If you're into uh, Velcro patches for your bag or whatever, uh, if you're into bug out and that sort of stuff. Uh, also, if you're in Australia, I have lots of handle making material that you can jump on board with. So if you're looking for brass, plate, pin stock, stabilized materials, things like this handle that you've seen today, lots of other similar things on the website, resin cast and uh, stabilized timbers. Please jump on there, support me. You'll find the prices are very competitive, probably cheaper than anywhere else in Australia and, uh, and some of the best quality stuff I, I think you can get a hold of. So thanks so much for your time. Have a great weekend. Uh -oh.